Hello everyone and welcome to this video going over all creatures in the Eternal Cylinder. I will be listing the creatures based off how the Compendium sorts them, which is by biome. Starting off with all biomes, we have the Celestial Trawalla, which is a giant celestial space worm that can send out a powerful electric shock to anything it sees as a threat or just wants to kill. So Smart Trebum can use the Celestial Trawalla to destroy their enemies. If anything gets too close to the Celestial Trawalla, it will spit out a toxic gas instead and blow anything back. These are the guardians of ancient Trebum shrines and were once great friends with the Trebum before the Cylinder came. You can see where a Celestial Trawalla will be by looking up into the sky as their many tails drop down from the special portals they create in the sky. Next is the Zushgarg, a large aerial predator that can appear in any biome. It has a purple beam of light that emits from its body to the ground. Anything caught in this purple light can get sucked up by the Zushgarg, where it traps its meal in a whirlwind. When it's ready to eat, it shoots out its tongue to grab the food and pull it into its mouth, be it glickable, plant, or trebum. Once the Zushkark has had its fill, it will drop any remaining creatures or plants it has in its hold back to the ground. There is a special music that plays when a Zushkark approaches to warn trebum it is nearby. The Zushkark will not eat spiky trebum that are too painful to eat, and trebum with sucker feet can root themselves so they do not get pulled up by the Zushkark. Now for the savanna biome. The sack fly is a small blue fly found near water, and Trebum can make it drop its sack to get an energy boost from the cloud it produces. Trebum can also suck up the sack fly and eat it for 20 HP. The spring worm is a small worm that wanders around and occasionally shoots out spring worm excreta, which Trebum can eat if they so desire, but this also is used in some mutation recipes. Although it is listed as being a savanna creature, it can be found in every biome. When a Trebum eats the spring worm, they gain the water processor, mutation, and 25 health. Pouchfish is a large blue fish that swims on the surface of water. This fish gives the Trebum the storage body mutation and 70 HP when eaten. It can be found in any large body of water in any biome. Leaptail is an orange fish with a slim body and webbed fin. This fish gives Trebum the webbed feet mutation and 60 HP when eaten. It can be found in any large body of water in any biome. The Hophopop is a grasshopper-like creature that is prey for all predators. It is very skittish and hops around. When a threat gets too close, it drops a Hophopop pod to distract its enemies. The Hophopop only has four pods though, and if it drops its last pod, then it will die. The Hop 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 pod gives Trebum the Leaping Legs mutation and 10 water when eaten. Hop Hop Hops can only be found in the Savanna and Corrupted Plains biome. Shelled Grolusk is a large snail slash slug creature. It hides in its shell whenever it is scared, and no predators seem to hunt it. The shelled Grolusk will search for food while inside its shell, and when it has spotted a tasty meal, the Grolusk will leave its shell, which will be left open revealing an iridescent pearl inside. Once the Grolusk eats its food, it quickly goes back to its shell and closes it again. This makes it easy to lure out a Grolusk, because all a Trebum has to do is throw out some food far enough for the creature to come out of its shell and go after it. Then the Trebum can steal the iridescent pearl inside. Breaking open this pearl will give Trebum the Grolusk sack. When this is eaten, it gives Trebum the iridescent skin mutation in 15 HP. Or the iridescent pearl can be processed by the mineral processor mutation for one mineral. Shelled Grolusk seem to have another defense mechanism, and so far the only way I found to trigger this mechanism is for an eternal cylinder agent to get close to the Grolusk with its yellow light. I got a cleanser and a watcher to chase me near some Grolusks, and they started glowing this bright rainbow color. 
Now this glow seemed to be completely visual and did not do any damage, but let me know if you have encountered this rainbow glow and if it has caused any other effects. Shelled Grolusk are only found in the savanna and corrupted plains biomes. Glickbull. They are small spherical creatures that only have a large head surrounded by a membrane that they lick in order to move. Glickbull are prey to everything, but if they can survive, they will turn into a much larger tongle groplet. Glickbull live in packs for safety, and while they are usually very scared and skittish, if one of their pack is getting picked on by a tribum, then the rest of the pack will come to their rescue and attack. Dead Glickbull can be picked up by Trebum, and eating their head grants the legless mutation for 30 seconds, but also restores 80 health points to the Trebum. Glickbull can be found in any biome. Tongo Groplet is a medium-sized herbivore that will try to scare off threats by shaking its body and making a loud sound. If the threat does not leave, they do a deadly roll attack. If the Tongo Groplet is attacked though, it will run away in fear. Tongo Groplets with the green body can only be found in the savanna or corrupted plains biome. The only predator that goes after Tongo Groplets is the Tongo Grop, which, funnily enough, is the final life stage of the Glickpool and Tongo Groplet. The Tongo Grop is the largest land predator there is, and this is the final stage of the Glickpool as I said before. This massive apex predator sees everything as prey. The only thing the Tongo Grop fears is the eternal cylinder and its agents. The Tongo Grop has special music to warn Trebum of its presence. Every part of this creature is dangerous. It can kill with its sharp claws, its green ball, and can shoot deadly acid on nearby prey. The Tongo Grop will always prefer to go after larger prey rather than smaller prey, so a Trebum in danger can get a Tongo Grop to stop chasing them by running by a nearby Tongo Groplet or Omnigrom. And I have even seen Tongo Grops go after Onkyfirds. Celestial Trawallas will kill Tongo Grops as well, but the Tongo Grops seem to be oblivious to the Celestial Trawallas presence and do not run away from them. Tongo Grop are not that smart and can be tricked by Smart Trebum to take them down. While Tongo Grops will not go after each other directly, if they happen to be chasing the same prey, they can run into each other and in doing so will fight over food, killing each other instantly, allowing Trebum to reap the rewards of their kills. When killed, a Tongo Grop drops a Tongo Grop Acid Pump. The Tongo Grop at Acid Pump gives it the Toxic Trunk mutation and 100 HP when eaten. There is a special desert variant of the Tongo Grop as well that has this sand-colored skin but behaves exactly the same way as the Savanna Tongo Grop and also drops the Tongo Grop Acid Pump when killed. The only biome a Tongo Grop is not in is the Tundra. Omnigrop is a medium-sized predator that is basically a gigantic mouth with eyes on the sides of its body. It is an ambush predator that waits for prey to get close since it cannot run that fast. When it sees prey, it jumps into action and chases it to try and eat it. These predators can eat an entire Trebum in just one bite. They will not eat spiky Trebum though. Omnigram will eat anything that comes between it and its meal, so Smart Trebum can shoot plants into the Omnigram's mouth to delay it for a few seconds. They can also shoot hard-shelled items into the Omnigram's path, and it will break open the hard shell and spit out the soft core, then run away. Trebum can also shoot water at the eye of the Omnigram, which will cause it to be stunned for a second, and if they continue shooting water into its eye, then the creature will just run away. Because how would you like it if someone sprayed water in your eye? A dead Omnigram drops an Omnigram pellet. If a Trebum eats the Omnigram pellet, the Trebum gains the Irascible Trunk mutation for 5 minutes and gains 80 HP. Omnigrams can be found in the savanna, desert, and corrupted plains. Anki for male. The Anki fur is this medium-sized aerial predator that uses a sack of gas to float. It flies quite slow and is easy to outrun. It scans the savanna for prey and when it finds some, 
it will start heading towards the prey. To catch up to its prey a bit faster, it will sometimes release a burst of gas to give it a little speed boost. When it catches up to its prey, it will do a ground slam to immobilize the prey and then releases a cloud of toxic gas to finish the job. Trap them with the filter trunk mutation though, can avoid taking damage from this toxic gas. You can easily tell an Occupert is a male because it has a beak with no pattern on it and is more of this tan brown color. Female Occupherts, on the other hand, have more of a yellow color and have a recognizable pattern on their beaks. They behave similarly to the males in how they fly around and how they attack, but the one key difference between the females and the males is that females can also be seen guarding their nests, which usually house one to two eggs. While the Ankyfert sits on its nest, it will be analyzing for threats and it can rotate around the nest. If anything gets too close, it will release a cloud of toxic gas to deal damage to anything nearby and make it go away. Trebum can shoot water at female Ankyfert that are on their nest to disorient them. Occasionally, the Ankyfert will leave the nest to float around and look for food or just scan the area. And if it sees anything it doesn't like, it can do a ground slam and sprays out toxic gas. Ankyfert females can be tricked into incubating Trebum eggs. All a Trebum must do is put their Trebum egg into the Ankyfert nest while the female is sitting on it or while she is in the air, and she will eventually go to sit on it. While the Ankyfert is on the nest, it will incubate the Trebum egg and hatch it. Trebum can also attempt to steal the Ankyfert's eggs for the nutritious Ankyfert egg yolks, which restores 60 HP. Ankyferts are in the savanna and corrupted plains. Next is the Tundra Biome. The Ocular Orthopod is a small bug creature with a large eye that wanders the tundra and corrupted plains. A Trebum that eats the Ocular Orthopod gains the Analytical Eyes mutation and 20 HP. The Bazabu is a slim fish with a unique pattern that is found in the water once you reach the Tundra Biome. After that, it can be found in any large body of water with other fish. Trebum that eat the Bazabu get the Electrogenic Skin mutation and 40 HP. Fush are a white creature that looks like a spoopy ghost. It likes to hop on top of cold rocks and warm them up to scorching hot. Trebum can then use these rocks for warmth in the cold tundra, or to warm up other creatures, or hatch Trebum eggs. Fush are the main prey animals to many predators in the tundra, and Fush can only be found in the tundra. Gargadend is a predatory plant that looks like a pitcher plant. Gargadends stay in one spot until they sense nearby prey, and then they will open up their leaves to scan around. When they have a lock on their prey, they will shoot out a poison that instantly knocks out prey in hits. The Trebum will have this special sleeping animation to show they are incapacitated, and even if you make them the leader, they will not move because they are asleep. Once the Gargadend has knocked out its prey, it slowly walks up to it and then scoops it up into its mouth with a long tongue-like appendage. It will then stuff its prey into its mouth and hold it there until it dies. Trebum can shoot water at the Gargadend to make it let go of their friend. If a Gargadend scoops up a wheel-bodied Trebum, the Gargadend will instantly die as it cannot fit it in its mouth. Blue Tongle Grublet. This is the Tundra variant of the Tongle Grublet, the Savannah. It has slightly lighter pink skin with a striped pattern and a blue sphere instead of green. Their behavior is the same as the Savannah Tongle Grublet. The only difference is that the Blue Tongle Grublet will drop the Tongle Grublet organ killed. Trebum that eat this gain the mixer body mutation in 75 HP. The blue tongue droplet can only be found in the tundra. Blue Omnigrom is an Omnigrom that has adapted to the tundra. It has blue striped fur to keep it warm in the cold environment, and behaves exactly the same as the Savannah Omnigrom. It seems to have slightly more health than its Savannah cousin, and it drops the Omnigrom pellet when killed. Vushlop is a medium-sized aerial predator that swoops down at prey to attack. 
If the prey is small enough, the Vushlop will pick it up and carry it to its nest on top of a dendro spiral. Then it slams the prey into the nest with brutal force to incapacitate it. The Vushlop will drop spiky trebum instantly, and they cannot pick up trebum that root themselves to the ground with sucker feet. If the Vushlop picks up a real body trebum, it will die. When a Vushlop finds prey, it takes a while to aim itself so it can dive down to pick it up. If the prey runs at the Vushlop, which prevents it from diving at it, it will eventually get frustrated and just fly down to the ground and do a melee attack at its prey. The Vushlop can only be found in the tundra. Tripobosh. This is a weird looking predator with three snouts and primitive eyes that can only detect light. It relies on its sense of smell to find prey. The triple bosch can move fast and attacks with powerful force. When a triple bosch senses that it's close to prey, it will leap forward in a brutal attack. Or if the prey is close enough to its beak, it will just do a simple pet. Its extremely accurate sense of smell is also its weakness. This special odd-looking plant in the tundra emits a special odor that will hide the trebum's scent and disgust the triple bosch. As you can see here, whenever a triple bosch smells this plant, it is disgusted and runs away immediately. If trebum find a triple bosch is on their trail, they can lead the triple bosch to a different prey item to distract the predator, such as Fush or Glickpool. Trebum can also lead the triple bosch to a blue tongle droplet, as the triple bosch knows how fearsome these herbivores are and it does not mess with them. So if they sense that they are close to a blue tongle droplet, they will instantly run away in fear. Triple bosch are cowards and will run away if attacked. Trebum can squirt the body of the triple bosch with water to temporarily stun it as it will shake off the water before resuming its hunt. When a triple bosch is killed, it drops the triple bosch antenna, and if a trebum eats it, they gain the impaired eyesight for 3 minutes and 40 HP. Triple bosch are only found in the tundra. The Frozen Sclaw. This is the apex predator of the tundra, which there are very few of. In fact, I have only been able to find one in the entire game, which is the boss battle Frozen Sclaw that has unique music. Let me know in the comments below if you have found more than one Frozen Sclaw. The Frozen Sclaw's heart hangs down outside of its body. When the heart is cold, the Frozen Sclaw cannot move. The Frozen Sclaw is a sitting duck when it is completely frozen, and Trebum can attack the heart directly to kill it before it can get a chance to be active. But bringing any heat source near the heart will warm it up so that the Sclaw can move again. Once the heart has had some heat applied to it, it can never freeze completely back into ice. But the colder the frozen squaw is, the slower it moves. If the heart is taken near any other heat sources, the frozen squaw will gain more and more heat, which is represented by the heart's connection to the body here as it slowly fills up with a glowing red color. The hotter the heart gets, the faster the squaw can move. However, the frozen squaw can only take a certain amount of heat before that heat becomes deadly. When the vein connecting the heart to the chest is filled up all the way to that ice part on the squaw's chest, that's when you know that the frozen squaw has obtained the maximum amount of heat it can handle. If the frozen squaw stays at this maximum amount of heat for too long, it will die. A dead squaw will drop the frozen squaw heart, which gives Trebum the regenerative body mutation and 100 HP. Next we have the desert. The tetra crab is a four-legged crab creature that wanders the desert and corrupted plains biomes. Trebum that eat the tetra crab gain the quadruped legs mutation and 30 HP. Finned a jump fish. This is a fish that likes to jump out of the water and can be found in large bodies of water with other fish once you reach the desert biome and beyond. There is one hidden fin jump fish you can find in chapter 1 in a lake after talking to the second elder. Trebum that eat it gain the amphibian body mutation and 60 HP. Tregrum are a predator that looks almost like a trebum, but if you look at its eyes, they have a vertical pupil instead of a round one, and they also have flat feet 
And if you look closely at their body, you can see the separation in their exoskeleton plates where they unfold. The Tregrum will join Trebum packs and pretend to be part of the pack, and when it decides it's a good time, will reveal itself to attack the pack. Spraying the Tregrum with water will scare it away and make it burrow into the sand. If you know you have an imposter Tregrum in your pack, you can spray water at it and it will reveal itself and then burrow into the sand. You can also reveal these imposters by trying to take control of it by switching the leader and you'll see when you select it, it'll just have a bunch of question marks. When you try to select it, it will reveal itself. Tregrum can mostly be found in the desert, although one time I did see one in the Corrupt Plains. Articulated Angsta. At first look, these creatures don't appear alive, they look like dead bone structures. When prey gets close to them, the articulated angstock will start growing rapidly in the direction of their prey. If you look closely, the black beads that stick out of the articulated angstock are its eyes. When this predator gets close enough to its prey, a mouth will emerge to grab the prey and crush it to death. I found that the articulated angstock will only let go of trebum if you spray water at the eyes of the angstock head that has trapped the trebum. If you have the toxic trunk, you can spray anywhere on the head and it will instantly let go. If it grabs a spiky trebum, it will let it go. As for distracting it with other prey, it seems to only have a taste for trebum. As I tried to feed an angstock a glick bowl, and it just would not grab it. If the articulated angstock extends itself too far, this special end piece comes out instead of a mouth. Sometimes as an articulated angstock chases its prey, it will expose a rattle seed instead of a mouth. This is not really a seed, but an egg sac that has baby articulated angstocks inside. Trebum that pick up the rattle seed should be careful as a mouth can come out immediately after. Trebum that eat the rattle seed get the rattle trunk mutation in 10. Food. Articulated ink stocks can only be found in the desert. Anogrash. This is the desert variation of the triple bosh, but it only has one snout, no fur, tusks, and a different pattern. Its behavior is the same as the triple bosh, and it drops a triple bosh antenna when killed. There is a special mutation in the desert Trebum get from the stink leaf that gives them odorous skin. Any Anogrash who smell these stinky trebum will be overwhelmed and run away. Anagrash can only be found in the desert. Clabarok is a gigantic predator that lives under the sand. You know it is nearby because you will hear the sand move and a small portion of the sand will be moving around. Here is what it looks like when a Clabarok is around. When the predator gets close to its prey, a weird external eye will come out of the sand and look around, allowing the Clabarok to know where its prey is. Once it has locked onto the location of its prey, the eye will go back into the sand and the Clabarok will travel to the prey's location. A few seconds later, the ground will rumble and then the massive Clabarok will shoot out from the sand, eating anything in its mouth's path. This massive predator can destroy an entire party of Trebum in just one bite. If the Clabarok eats anything, then it will shoot out a Clabarok pearl after descending back into the sand. A Trebum can pick up the pearl and then break it open to find a microbiotal colony, which gives them the plated body mutation in 50 HP. The Clabarok pearl can be processed by the mineral processor mutation into two minerals. Can only be found in the desert. Infant Garling. This is the adolescent form of the Great Gar. These are large herbivores that hop around in the desert biome, and they drop small purple plants from their purple sac. They look like fuzzy eyes and even follow you as you move around. Trebum can pick up these explosive plants before they hit the ground and use them against their enemies. Infant garlings can only be found in the desert. The Great Gar. The adult Great Gar is a gargantuan herbivore that wanders the desert. It has three legs and a large purple sack that also drops the small purple plants that explode when they hit the ground like the infant garlings. The Great Gar's favorite food is the stench leaf, and when it comes across some, it will stop and suck up the plant along with anything nearby. If the Great Gar happens to grab something it does not like, it will spit it out. A Trebum that eats a stench leaf though will get the odorous skin mutation in 28 food. Then a Great Gar will happily eat the Trebum 
and place it in its purple sack. This sack is where the great gar spores are and give the tornado trunk mutation in five water. Trabum can leave the sack from a convenient exit on the side of the great gar, where waste is thrown out. Corrupt Plains. This bio seems to have all of the savannah creatures in it, just so you know, but along with those, it has its own unique life forms. The Skulk Bug is a weird looking bug that wanders the Corrupt Plains. When a Trubum eats it, they gain the Stealth Flakes mutation in 25 HP. Squatabu. This is a small aquatic creature that only lives in corrupted, toxic green water. The Squataboo will jump out of the water to latch onto prey, like Trebum, and take control of their bodies. It also looks like a fashionable hat. The Squataboo will then force their prey to go into the toxic water and drown themselves so their pack can eat. If the Squataboo takes control of the Trebum you are controlling, it instantly boots you into another Trebum as the previous leader Trebum starts running into the water. However, you can retake control of the Trebum that got the Squataboo on it and walk out of the water again. You do not have to shoot the Squataboo off to regain control, but you can shoot the Squataboo off the Trubum it is latched onto by just squirting water at it. If the Squataboo misses its attack, it will flop around on the ground until it gets back into the water. Trubum can pick up Squataboo though and eat them to give themselves 60 HP. That'll show those pesky Squataboo not to mess with your Trubum tribe. Yakfert. This is a super weird looking creature that is a herbivore and it looks like just a bunch of organs. When a predator gets close to the Yakfert, it will expel a toxic gas, which will deal damage, but Trebum, who have the filter trunk mutation, can avoid getting affected by this gas. Yakfert are quite fragile creatures. When they are killed, they explode which does deal minor damage to anything nearby the Yakfert. These Yakfert like to gather in packs and they can be on the ground or on top of objects inside of rocks. Rundeslot. This is the alpha predator of the Kurok Plains. This weird creature is a sphere of eyes and sharp tongues. If prey is in melee range of the Rundeslot, it will shoot its tongues out at the prey trying to deal damage. If it sees its prey from far away, then the eyes will all turn red and it will do a charged attack where it throws itself at great force with its prey. It also can do a body slam attack. Rundeslocks drop the tongue bag when killed and Trevon that eat this gain the tongue to trunk mutation and 30 HP. Grash Tub. This is a massive scavenger with many rows of rotating sharp teeth and some bits of food stuck on its teeth form safe platforms that a Trebum can use to get to the Grash Tub safely. The Grash Tub prefers to eat dead Trawalla, and inside the Grash Tub is a Trawalla heart, which is a remnant of the Trawalla it has eaten. There is also a bunch of stinky but not harmful gas inside of the Grash Tub, as it is a scavenger that eats rotten meat so it has some super stinky breath in there. However, this gas is highly flammable and can be set off by a Trebum with the unstable body mutation or volatile bombs. This will ignite the gas, creating a powerful explosion that will kill the Grash Tub, allowing the Trebum to assert their dominance over this terrifying creature. Trebum that eat the Trevala heart gave the Master of Songs mutation and 100 HP. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite creature is in the Eternal Cylinder. Good luck outrunning the Cylinder.